today it's good to be with you I just want to uh, share with you some thoughts on ancient historiography and uh, Flavius Josephus uh, against Appian and how that relates to the study of Hitlerism uh, and specifically uh, the four Gospels uh, as you all know I've done many many videos on Richard Balcom's book Jesus and the eyewitnesses the basic thesis of that book um, is uh, attacking the Boltman theology uh, and historical scholarship. Uh, Boltman um, in the 60s uh, was the king of uh, biblical scholarship concerning the New Testament and his thesis was that there was um, anonymous communities that developed the mythological structure of the New Testament. Uh, Balcom's uh, book is a direct attack, a direct assault upon that thesis, showing that um, the historical context of um, ancient historiography in the first century, uh, lists, uh, written from a historical perspective, and how that relates to the question um, of Boltman. And the way it relates is this, is um, Balkan was saying that um, that there were not anonymous communities, that there were actually communities rooted in individuals and the individuals had key authority in passing the historical information about a certain event. And then he backs this up with the defense of the importance of eyewitness material and uh, he shows that ancient literature when it was trying to deal with history especially in the first century saw eyewitness material as important and he traces this right back to Polybius the Greek historian going back from 200 BC it is to use eyewitness material and uh, Polybius was accepted as a, a major um, influential historian of in the first century by first century historians who wanted to model the writing of history concerning um, Polybius. So these are the kind of arguments that uh, Balcom has used and I've used them quite effectively against skeptics, uh, not been refuted by skeptics in any shape or form. And I've made many, 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 many videos. So if you type in Richard Balcom Jesus and the eyewitnesses, uh, you'll find countless videos that I've made on this topic. But I do like to do my own research. I like to go and, and think about things myself, as well as read scholars. And uh, about reading Flavius Josephus against Appian, and I was flabbergasted. I was absolutely astounded at what I was reading uh, in this book. Uh, Josephus is being attacked by Appian and uh, another Greek, uh, a Greek uh, historian, and he's being attacked on his scholarship of writing history about the Jews. And so, Joseph, what we get in the book is Josephus sharing with us his methodology, his historical methodology of how he wrote history and it's much much deeper and richer and much more complex than even Boltman or a Richard Balcom would give credit I found the whole book fascinating from an ancient point of ancient or, or historiography that is you know the study of how we write history I found it fascinating absolutely fascinating the mindset of this first century Jewish historian how he thought how he his mind worked and these are some of the things that 
that come across to me. When he's arguing and defending that the Bible is historically accurate, uh, i.e. the Old Testament, and that uh, his writing is historically reliable, one of the first things he does is he gives the synopsis, and, and it's an absolutely brilliant synopsis. It really is brilliant. He gives a brilliant synopsis of ancient Greek historiography. He calls all the great and not so great Greek historians, and he gives the strengths and weaknesses of each historian and their matter. And it is absolutely a wonder to behold because you get a bird's eye view of the mindset of ancient historiography, how the ancients wrote his history. What comes across here is how Josephus is able to quote many, many different Greek historians and compare and contrast the data, saying this one had an agenda, this one sources was not correct. So the first point that I want to say is that we don't realize how complex and sophisticated ancient historiography was they were not simplistic writers. Josephus shows a level of sophistication when it comes to writing history compared to any Oxford Don or any historian today. His local ramification, the whole, the whole spectrum of Greek history, and he's able to quote and compare and contrast and critically analyze a variety of ancient Greek historians in order to gain whatever information that he, he wants to gain. So first of all, the sophistication. Ancient historiography is much more sophisticated than we give than we have given credit to. That's the first point that I want to say. The second point that I want to say is sources. It was not only important for Josephus to have eyewitness material, it was also important to have solid documentation. Without proper source material, without source material that was reliable, and the history work could not be done properly. And that was at the root of his writing. And so he talks about the Greek historians, how they didn't keep records until late in their historical writing. He notes that the Persians and the Babylonians did, and that they are a model of recording accurate information. Then he notes um, that in Jewish uh, historiography, there was always a collection of sources, and he talked about the priesthood, the high priesthood, and that the high priesthood would all would you know would make sure that that births were recorded, deaths were recorded, etc. And so within Jewish culture, within Jewish history, there was uh, an important class of people who were there to record the soul and were to do it accurately. So those are the two points that I want to make, really. The complexity of ancient historiography, much more complex and nuanced and sophisticated than modern scholars are giving credit to, than Balkan would give credit to, or even a Bultman would give credit to. Secondly, the importance of sources, accurate sources, was important to Josephus was important to ancient writers. It was important that they got accurate sources. So, excuse me, the lesson to be learned there is that when we're studying the Gospel of Luke, let's go to the Gospel of Luke and take it, if we, if we look at the Gospel of Luke, In Luke, 
chapter 1 it says many have undertaken to draw up an account of things that have been fulfilled among us just as they were handed down to us by those from first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word now notice there that there are these sources there are these sources it's some of its eyewitness material mm -hmm. but then it's been preserved by those who preserve that eyewitness material therefore since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning so he's investigated it is gone to the eyewitness material is gone to the sources it seems good also to me to write an orderly account for you most excellent Theophilus so that you may know the thing but now he then talks about the birth of Jesus in the time of Herod king of Judea so Luke would have if we look at Josephus as a model Luke would have gone back and found the documentation about Herod, about Zechariah, about the you know in the in the time of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah. He belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Now, when Luke is writing this in that historical context, there will be good solid information because the priesthood collected and made sure that this information was preserved so when Luke is writing he would have had these sources been able to make these statements he would have been able to compare and contrast in a more sophisticated way than we would give in credit by law who man that time and like Balcom he was relying on eyewitness material so I would say that we need to have Balcom Balcom is superb and is important about Polybius and the importance of eyewitness material but I also think we need to look at historians of the time such as Josephus and see that actually historiography was much more complex and sophisticated than we give them credit that Luke would have used eyewitness material he would have used historical documentation and comparing and contrasting in a judicious way just like a very sophisticated historian would do today. So I hope that uh, of interest you, and I would encourage you to read Flavius Josephus against Appian and uh, learn about how a first century historian thought about history and how we should write history. Very fascinating, really enjoyed it. One of the best books that I've read over the last few years um, because I'm interested in ancient historiography and I found that fascinating. So I hope that's been a blessing to you and God bless you. Take care.